Hello there, my name is Matt Young. I am the founder of Engage the Nations. You can uh, look up the website at engagethenations.org. Uh, today, what I want to talk to you about is who you are in Jesus Christ. And so everything that I'm gonna read to you is out of the Bible. I'm not gonna quote every single scripture um, that, that is associated with what I'm about to read to you, um, but I just want you to have the opportunity to hear who you really are in Jesus and, and what the Bible actually says about you. So let me just jump right in. The Bible says that you are the salt of the earth, that you are the light of the world, that you are a child of God, that you are part of the true vine, a channel of Christ's life, that you are Christ's friends. And the Bible says, no longer do I call you a servant, but I call you a friend. So it's really important there are people who have this whole servant theology, um, but you're Christ's friend. You are chosen and appointed by Christ to bear his fruit. God chose you. You have been set free from sin. You are no longer a slave to unrighteousness. You are actually a slave to righteousness. You have been enslaved to God. You have been given wholly and completely to him. You are a son of God. And God is your spiritual father. Since you are led by the spirit of God, you are a son of God. You are a joint heir with Christ, sharing in his inheritance. You have been... You have been, sorry, you have been adopted by God. I couldn't read my own handwriting. Um, and I just want to say this again. You are a joint heir with Christ. Everything you need is in Jesus Christ. When he died, when he was buried, when he rose again, and when he ascended, everything that you need is in Jesus Christ, okay? It's because you are a full heir of Jesus Christ. You are the temple of God, a dwelling place of God. His spirit and his life dwell in you. You are united with the Lord and are one in spirit with him. You are joined with him. You are one with him. You are a member of Christ's body. You are a new creation. That word in the original language is actually a creature. So you are actually a new creature, okay? You're not a human being. You're a new creation. You're a new creature. You are reconciled to God and you are a minister of reconciliation. Everywhere you go, because you have Jesus living inside of you, you are a minister of reconciliation. You bring reconciliation wherever you go. You're a son of God and one in Christ. You are an heir of God, since you and I are sons of God. You are a saint. You're God's workmanship, his handiwork. You're born anew in Christ to do his work. You are a fellow citizen with the rest of God's family. You are a prisoner of Christ. You are righteous and holy. Don't let anybody tell you anything different than that. The Bible is very clear. You're righteous and holy. You are a citizen of heaven. You are seated in heavenly places. Currently, right now, you are seated in heaven. The Bible says you were raised up with Jesus and seated with him. Let that really sink in. You are chosen by God. You are holy and dearly loved. Christ is, Christ is your life. And it says in the Bible that when he appears, you appear. Okay? And let the let the opposite th that let the opposite like resonate over you. That where you go, Jesus is, because you're one with Jesus. You are a holy partner sharing in a heavenly calling. You are a partaker of Christ and you share in his life. You are one of God's living stones being built up in Christ as a spiritual house. You are part of the royal priesthood. You are a member of the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. You have received mercy. It's very important that you receive that. You have received mercy. You are an alien and a stranger to this world, referring to the earth in which, you, in which you temporarily live. You are actually a citizen of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. The Bible uses those two words 
um, to mean the, the same thing. The kingdom of heaven is actually inside of you. It's not outside of you. It's actually inside of you where, where God resides, where God lives, inside of you. So let that sink in. Um, you are a, a citizen of, of heaven. You're a citizen of the kingdom of God. And it's your job to then begin to release the kingdom of God onto the earth. You are a child of God and you resemble Jesus Christ. You are born of God and the evil one, the devil, cannot touch you. You have been justified. You are justified. You're completely forgiven and made righteous. You died with Christ when he died to the power of sin's rule over your life. You are free from ever from condemnation. If you experience condemnation ever at all, the Bible says, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Don't partner with condemnation. Don't partner with shame. Don't partner with guilt. Those are all not of God. You are free from ever from condemnation. You've been placed into Christ by God's doing. Okay, so you can't be removed from that. That's one of the biggest lies you would ever hear is that you can be separated from the love of God. The Bible says you cannot be separated from the love of God. It's impossible, okay? You've received the Spirit of God into your life that you may know the things freely given to you by God. You have been given the mind of Christ. You have been bought with a price. You are not your own. You belong to God. Remember, there's a oneness. You've been established, anointed, and sealed by God in Christ, and you have been given the Holy Spirit as a pledge guaranteeing your inheritance to come. Since you have died and you no longer live for yourself, but Christ is the one that lives in you, you have been made righteous. Now, I've said this multiple times. You are righteous. You've been made righteous. The reason I've said it multiple times is because it's not in the Bible just once. It actually talks about in Isaiah when you ascend into heaven that there is an angel that takes a coal and sticks it and sticks it on your lips to make you clean, okay? If you are feeling unclean, if you're not feeling holy, if not feeling righteous, it's just a matter of changing your mindset, step into heaven, ask God to, to cleanse you, to make you righteous. That's the point of stepping into heaven by faith. You have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame before him. So let that sink in. You may be struggling right now. You may have doubts. You may not know what your future holds. But keep in mind, God chose you before the beginning of the world to be holy and blameless before him. He chose you. You were predestined and determined by God to be adopted as God's son. And that's why as an adopted son, you have full access as an heir to the kingdom of God that everything that God has, you have access to. You have been redeemed and forgiven and are a recipient of his lavish grace. You've been made alive together with Jesus Christ. You've been raised up and seated with Christ in heaven. That's why when somebody asks, well, where was I when Jesus died or when he was buried or when, I ro when he rose again or when he ascended? The Bible is very clear. You were actually with him. It says, I have been raised up and seated with Christ in heaven. I have direct access to God through the spirit. I may approach God with boldness, freedom, and confidence. I've been rescued from the domain of Satan's rule and transferred to the kingdom of Christ. I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins. The debt against you has been canceled. Jesus Christ himself is in you. You are firmly rooted in Christ and you are now being built up in him. You have been spiritually circumcised. The old regenerate nature has been removed. You have been made complete in Jesus Christ. You have been buried, raised, and made alive in Christ. You died with Christ. You've been raised up with Christ. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Christ is now your life. You have been given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. You have been born from above and set apart according to God's doing. Because you are sanctified and you're one with the sanctifier, he is absolutely not ashamed to call you a brother. 
you have the right to come boldly before the throne of grace and to find mercy and grace in time of need. You have been given exceedingly great and precious promises by God, which you are a partaker of by God's divine nature. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The Bible also says God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has allotted to you a measure of faith. The Lord is the strength of your life. He will display that strength and you will display that strength and you will take action because you know God. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That's referring to the enemy being in the world and God being inside of you. God always will lead you in triumph. Don't ever accept defeat. Jesus Christ, or Yeshua, became wisdom to you from God, and God gives wisdom whenever you ask for it. So if you, if you need wisdom, just ask, ask for it. God has given you loving kindness, compassion, faithfulness, and hope. You don't have to worry. You can cast all your anxiety on Jesus Christ who cares for, for you. Where there is liberty, there is the Spirit of the Lord. You don't ever have to feel condemned. You are not condemned because of Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. You are free, you are holy, you are set apart. You are never alone. You are always one with God. He will never ever leave you or forsake you. Any theology or doctrine you hear where there's some kind of separation, it's completely not biblical. You are not cursed. You don't have bad luck. The Bible says that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law so that you might receive his spirit. The Apostle Paul says in scripture that you can be content in all circumstances. We all know that Jesus Christ became sin on behalf of us so that we are righteous in him. There's nothing you need to do to earn righteousness. You are already righteous. There's nobody that can come against you because God is for you. The Bible says, who can come against us when God is for us? God is the author of peace and he gives, gives you and I knowledge through his indwelling spirit. You are a conqueror through all things because of Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ. And you can take courage knowing that Jesus has overcome the world and its tribulations. I would just encourage you to, to meditate on these scriptures, to go ahead and watch this video a couple times and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as you're listening to this. You are amazing, you are loved, God absolutely loved you. He's had a plan for you since the beginning of time before anything was ever created. He was already in love with you before you had a physical body. He already had a plan for you. Uh, no matter what you've done, no matter what sin you've done, no matter like anything bad you've done, God absolutely loves you and he's made a way for you. And you do not have to stay in sin or shame or guilt or condemnation. God's plan for you is to be loved, to give love, and, and to be completely set free. So I hope this blesses you. Uh, God bless you as you uh, just go about your, your day or your night.